Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a localized fog effect with dust suspended in the air using Niagara particles in Unreal Engine 5. Before starting, let me thank you guys. This is still a really small channel, but seeing 50 subscriptions, 6,000 views and 150 likes in a short amount of time was quite unexpected to be honest. So thank you, it means a lot to me. Now let's dive in this tutorial. Here you can see the dust and fog particle effect in this sample map. Despite its relative simplicity, it can have a big impact on the perception of a scene, making it more mysterious and gloomy. Let's see how to do it. First of all, be sure to have an exponential height fog element in the scene and check the box volumetric fog. This is necessary because if you don't check this box, you won't see any volumetric effects. Now we proceed to create a new Niagara system by right-clicking on the content browser and selecting Niagara. We add the hanging particle emitter and click Finish. I'm going to rename it to NS Fog Dust. Then we create a new material for our dust particles and open it. We need to set the material blend mode to additive and the shading model to unlit. We also need to enable two-sided so our particles are always visible no matter their orientation. Let's add now a particle color node and connect it to emissive color so we can dry the material color using the values set in the Niagara system. Now we need to create a round mask for our particles by adding a sphere mask node. The first input will be connected to a text core node, while the other three can be set to 0.5 using a single constant. Finally, we add a multiply node and connect to it the particle alpha and the sphere mask. The output goes to the opacity of the material. We can now save and close the material editor. Now let's open the Niagara system we created before. The first thing we are going to create is the dust. In emitter properties, we set the sim target to GPU compute sim. We also need to set the bounds inside which the simulation will happen. We can go with minus 1000 for the min and 1000 for the max. Check also the local space checkbox. I've set the spawn rate in the emitter update group to 800 and the spawn probability to 0.7, meaning that there is a 70% chance in a given point in time that the particle will spawn. This will add some randomness. Talking about randomness, let's set the lifetime mode in the particle spawn section to random with a lifetime range of 5 to 8 seconds. I've set the color to a slightly translucent brown to make them appear more realistic. While you experiment with systems that spawn tiny particles like this, I strongly advise you to set the color to a very bright value, like 100 or 1000. In this way you can visualize them easily, otherwise you can lose them in the viewport. When everything is ok you can go back and set the final color. The size of the particles ranges from 0.1 to 0.3. The rotation is random too, even if it's not important in this case. We have two shape location modules, but we only need one, so I delete the second one and in the first shape location I've set the primitive to box, meaning that the particles will spawn in a boxed area with values of 1500 for the X and Y and 100 for the Z. In the particle update group, delete the drag scale sprite sides and scale color modules as we don't need them. To make the particles move we need to add a force in the particle update section. The hanging particles preset already has one in it. We can leave the noise strength to 5 and noise frequency to 25. I've also added a vortex force module with a force amount of 1 to make it uh, really light. I've also set a vortex origin speed of minus one, so that the particles tend to slowly spread away from the center, but you can play with this value together with the curl noise forces to achieve the desired effect. In the render group we have a sprite renderer. 
Here we need to set the material to be the one we created at the beginning. You'll see that the new material does not affect the particle because the material we created is virtually identical to the default one. But now you know how it works. We can save the Niagara system now and place it in the world to see its effect. Here you can see that the particles are very bright. That's because we set the color value really high, but that's just for debugging. Now we can set it to a lower value. Okay, now we are halfway to the final effect. In fact, we still need to create the fog. We start by creating a material as before, but this time will be a different kind of material. Let's create a new material in the content browser and open it. Here we'll set the material domain to volume and the blend mode to additive. Then we add a particle color node. We will multiply this with a parameter. So let's create one by pressing one on the keyboard and clicking in a empty space of the graph. We convert the constant to a parameter and call it albedo. Then set the default value to one. Now we can connect the albedo parameter and the RGB node of the particle color to a multiply node and connect them to the albedo input of the material. In this way, we can control the fog color from the Niagara system, like in the dust material we created before. Now we add the particle position, absolute word position, and particle radius nodes. Then connect them to a sphere mask like this. For the hardness, we can create a constant and leave it to zero. This will make the fog more smooth. Then we can create another constant and convert it to a parameter called extinction. Then we add it to a multiply node together with the output of the sphere mask. The output of the multiply then goes to the extinction input of the material. I'd set the extinction parameter to 0.06. This number should be changed according to your needs. It affects how much light will be stopped by the fog. We can now save and close the material editor. Going back to our Niagara system, Let's add another emitter by right-clicking on an empty space and select Add Emitter and then select Fountain. The target seam of this emitter will be GPU as well, so we check also the fixed bounds box and we set the bounds to minus 1000 for the min and 1000 for the max. Check also the local space checkbox. In the emitter update group we set the spawn rate to 800. In the particle spawn group, we set the mean lifetime to 3 and the max to 6. The sprite size mode should be random non-uniform with a mean value of 50 and 150, while the max values should be quite big, something like 300 and 750. At this point, the particle viewport will be quite crowded, so let's set the material on the sprite renderer to the volumetric material we created before and wait for the engine to compile the shaders. When the shader compilation is complete, you won't see the fog in the particle viewport. But don't worry, the fog is still there. In the shape location module, change the shape primitive from sphere to box and choose the size you need. In this example, I'm setting it to 2000, 1500 and 200. In the add velocity module, set the velocity mode to linear and choose the random range vector from the little arrow on the right. We want the fog to move randomly, but not too fast. So I'm setting the minimum on 2, 1 and minus 3. And for the maximum, I'm setting values of 50, 10 and 0. In the particle update group, remove the gravity force as we don't need it. In the scale color module, set the scale alpha curve to ramp up down. Finally, add a jitter position module and set the amount to 25 and the delay to 0.2. This will make the path of the particles less linear. This was the last step. Save the Niagara system and drag it into the scene, if you didn't already. And now you should see something like this. That's all guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, remember to like and subscribe to support my work. Be sure to check also the video description since I've posted a link to a poll that I made on Patreon where you can vote which subject you would like me to cover in future videos. Note that you don't have to be a subscriber to my Patreon to vote, 
You just need an account and getting one is free. Well, it's time to go now. See you on the next one, guys. Cheers.